Hello Reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be looking at Kong and using it as a front end as a toggle switch. So from it we can actually use it to control say rack extensions. Drums. Samples. VSTs and other things. So how is this done? Well, let's go and see. So let's make ourselves a toggle switch using Kong as the front end. So obviously we do need a Kong and we're gonna also need ourselves a Thor. I'm gonna use a shift on our Creatix. We don't need a mix channel because we're not using any of the sound modulation or the matrix at all. So all we're gonna do is flip around to the back. We're gonna take a gate out. We're gonna pull it into the gate, trig in, flip around to this front, change the run mode to stepped. Two steps we're gonna want we're going to take this down to the curve, we're going to set that to a zero, and we're going to set that to a one, two, seven. And that is it. Now when I hit this, you can see we can toggle between the two, no problems at all. So let's quickly wire this up and see how we'll actually wire this up. I'm going to take the note data to put that into the CV in, and then the gate's going to come from the curve. Turn it off, turn it on. As simple as that. So one of the one things I haven't spoken about yet is obviously the sync time here, because this does have a knock-on effect to the steps. Um, if I'm toggling faster than 1 16th, it's gonna wait 1 16th of a measure before it moves on to the next step. Obviously you can turn this sync off and you can have a faster rate if you wish. You could also use this to your advantage, um, but just remember the first time you activate it, it's always going to be instantaneous and then whatever measure you have set it's then going to wait so if we quickly go down to four fourths turn the click on so now we've got the click on when I hit it instant and you can see it's waited so that's instant that's going to wait that's going to wait again it's going to wait. And you can tell if it's going to wait or not by looking at the run button or what the run button is actually doing. So if the run button is actually highlighted, it means you're within this measure and that's going to take its time. Yeah. So now the run button is obviously going to be instant. As I say, you could use that to your advantage as well. So that's just something to bear in mind. So this is the basis really behind my big project, which we'll go back to in a second. I have got this combinator, which I thought, you know, and this appears in my main project, and this is available to download on my Dropbox in my CV section. Um, basically, it's a Kong, obviously, with a CV splitter, and you can see we have um, up to 16 Thors, which are obviously connected to each and every one of the gate outs. I then bring the Thors back really into the CV splitter um, and I'm using this as a patchwork. So obviously when you look at this, this is pad one, two, three and four. Then obviously we've got pad five to eight here, nine to 12 and obviously pad 16 in the corner. So it's, it's the same setup as the Kong itself. So it's easy to route thereafter. So we're back to my main project again and here down the middle was that combinator was looking at. Obviously there is a subtle difference and if we have a quick closer look at it, I've got a CV tap in there and I've also got a WBL 3001 in there. And I purely use these as a visual only. Um, they're not doing anything else. Um, obviously with a Kong, the problem with the Kong is we can, we can fire something off whatever it happens to be. And it'd be lovely if that light stayed lit, it doesn't. So I'm using the, the visuals here um, that I can actually say, oh yes, I've actually got that one, that one, that one lit. There's another one next to it lit. So I know that they're activated so I can hear them as well. Um, but it might be the case of when I'm actually doing the samples, the sample may have come to an end. 
Um, in which case, obviously, if I hit the button again, nothing's going to happen. So I have to remind myself to turn it off. I've got a visual there on the screen to, to help me with. So um, as we're talking about samples, um, so where's the sample? Here's one. And as you can see, the visuals appear on the screen a lot. So we've got our different samples going. And if we actually go and look at the thaws behind these, because they are slightly different, and I think that's the, the great thing about this sort of thing, is that we can sort of configure it of how we want. And we want that one there. And we come scrolling down, as you expect, it's pointing at C3, nothing special about that. But then obviously if we come to our next one, it's then obviously the next note, and so on and so forth. So you can just keep just putting up you know your different notes in there and for those who are wondering well why are we going off to a sampler to play these samples and not just play them within a nano within the, the Kong is because you're limited to like 50 second samples so using the NN, NNXT you can obviously have a lot longer samples and one of the things I also did with the um, NSXT over here is you can actually see of uh, taking the release time right up, so it's about four seconds. So I can have a real smooth, um, well, a nice smooth release. You could obviously bring the tack in as well, so you could have a nice fade in and a fade out. So basically, you know, that's what we're doing there. Um, the drum sequences themselves are slightly different setup um, because of the way the signal they need for them to work. And I've got them set up on either pad 11 and 12. So first of all, let's go to, um, pad 11 because I've done them slightly different each ways and as you can see the big difference is is I've actually changed the the curve round so I'm firing off a 127 then a 0 and over here the run type is actually a one shot um, and not step and the reason being is is because uh, to start a, a drum sequencer it needs a 127 signal to stop it it needs a 127 signal yeah most things start is a 127 and stop is a 0 or vice versa you know um, on this one here, I've done it slightly different. And if we scroll down, um, there's my curve, which is box standard. Everything else has been set up here as box standard, but this time I've actually set up the velocities to one, two, seven. And if we flip around to the back of the rack, you can actually see I'm using the gate, normal gate out, because all I have to do is send out that gate signal, bam has turned it on or off then the next time I hit it for the next step I just send the same signal again and it turns it on and off but I've used the curve one out and you can notice that's going off to somewhere else and that's one of the reasons I've, I've used the patch bay as well is I've got a number of things coming down to the CV mergers which is then going off to the EMI and I'm sending actually a MIDI signal out and where that MIDI signal is actually going out to is I'm sending it out and I'm using the MIDI signals to control OBS itself. So when I actually turn this on, like this VST on, and off, and on and off, it's actually, um, I'm actually turning on and off a screen within OBS itself. So I'm using the middle MIDI signals to turn these things on and off within OBS. So that's just like a clever little thing to do as well. And because I do need um, different note data, to far out because some of the gate data like with um, some of the yeah some of the note data is actually the same coming from the Thor I've actually got a patch over here um, which is I put this up on this should already be available on my CV stuff as well so you can actually obviously go and get that downloaded and basically it's loads of CV 8x4s which are assigned to each and every single note you can think of um, so it's just a very quick way I can go and say, oh, I need this this note. Well, there it is. That's the signal number. I don't have to go and work it out. I can just go and grab it and, and fire it off and bring it in. I think that more or less sort of covers everything I'm sort of really doing in this project and everything you've seen. It is quite basic, really, when you start to split it down. Um, but it's also quite powerful. That Thor, I think, toggle switch is a very powerful thing. Hopefully you're starting to see that. As for me and my fingers and obviously turning things on and off, well, yeah, there's nothing special really going on. Special going on here at all. If I find, where's my mouse? It's over here. So if I turn this on here, bam, there's my keyboard here. And it's just a, just a green screen coming over. 
and I've just happened to uh, line up my pads on my P1 to the pads <laughs> which will display on the screen. So I'm hitting my P1, turn things on and off. In fact, sorry, my P4. Um, so yeah, so there's nothing really magic going on there either. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it and I hope you made use of it. Uh, thank you for watching and bye for now.